So you may have heard of the factorial, the permutation, and the combination. These are sort of the three classic tools that are taught to us when we're first learning combinatorics or how to count. But I'm guessing you haven't heard of this fourth powerful counting tool that actually includes all of the other three. So what is this tool? Well, first, let's go through a quick example of factorials, permutations, and combinations as either a quick refresher or to get you up to speed in case you haven't heard of those before. So let's start with the factorial. Let's count the number of ways to rearrange the letters A, B, C, D, and E. There are five different letters, and we can pick any of them to be in the first position after we rearrange them. After we pick one, there are only four letters left to put in the second position, and then there's only three letters left for the third position, and so on. Since we need to make all of these decisions, we multiply all these values together, and we get this number, which works out to 120, and we can write it as five factorial. So the factorial is the counting technique that tells us how many different ways are there to arrange distinct objects in a row. A second tool that you might have learned is called permutations. So for this one, let's again have the letters A through E, and we'll arrange them in order, but this time we're only going to select three of the letters. So for the first position, there are still five choices, and for the second position, there are four, and for the third position, there are three. But now at this point, we can stop. Those are all the letters that we need, and we multiply those values together, and in this case, we get 60. So this is called a permutation. This is five permute three, because we had five distinct objects, and we ordered three of them. And usually the third tool that you would learn is called combinations. So for this one, again, we have the letters A through E, and again, we wanna pick three of them, but the difference is this time, we don't care about the particular order, we only care about which three letters are picked. So how can we solve this one? Well, we can start with the permutation, five times four times three. This would give us how many ways there are to choose three letters if we cared about the order. But since we don't care about the order, we've overcounted. And it turns out we've overcounted by a factor of 3 factorial. And why 3 factorial? That's the number of ways to rearrange three distinct letters. So we can take 5 times 4 times 3, the permutation, and divide by 3 factorial. So we're combining the two tools that we've talked about before to get this new tool, and this is called a combination. So this is 5 choose 3, which is often written like this or sometimes in this C notation to match the permutation notation. Okay, so it seems like we have these three tools, and at this point we might feel pretty good about our ability to count a bunch of different situations. And certainly that is true. But there are problems like this one that cannot be solved with only the three tools that we've talked about so far. So imagine that you have the letters AAA B, B, C, C. So this time there's seven letters, but the difference is some of them are duplicates. And we're wondering how many ways can we order these seven letters? Well, we could try to use a factorial because there are seven letters and seven positions and we care about their order. But the problem is we can't tell the A's apart. So what I mean by that is if we come up with some kind of ordering of these letters and then I asked you to close your eyes and I shuffled around some of the A's, but I didn't tell you exactly how I did it. When you open your eyes, it's going to look exactly the same as it did before. I can shuffle around the A's all I want, and no one will know the difference. So because of this, we need to take the factorial, but divide out by three factorial to account for the fact that the ordering of those three A's actually doesn't matter. And then the same thing is true of the Bs. There's two Bs, but if I switch their order, no one would know the difference. So we need to divide by two factorial as well to account for that. And the same with the Cs, we'll divide by another two factorial. So we get this object, seven factorial divided by three factorial times two factorial times two factorial. Now this is not exactly a factorial, but sometimes, when we're learning these things, it might be presented that way. It might be presented as 
It's mostly a factorial or a permutation, but we had to divide out by some order. But there's also another way to think about this problem, which is actually as a combination type problem. So how would we do that? Well, there are seven positions and we need to choose three of them to be A's. So you can use seven choose three to pick where you're going to place the A's. Now, at this point, we've already used up three of the positions, so there are only four positions left. So now we have four positions and we can choose two of them to be where the B's will go. And lastly, that leaves us with two positions and there are two C's, so if you want, you can write two choose two. That is just equal to one though, so it's not going to make any difference. So this problem seems to have two different solutions, one where we started with order with factorials or permutations, but then we had to divide out by some order, or we could view it as a combination problem, but one where we needed multiple steps and we needed to choose multiple times. But there's another tool that answers this exact question, and it's called a multinomial coefficient. And we've actually already discovered the formula for it. So in this case, to count the orderings of these letters, we had seven factorial, and then we had to divide by three factorial, two factorial, two factorial. This is the definition of the multinomial coefficient, seven, choose three, two, and two. So how do we read this notation? This means we have seven objects, and out of them we're gonna choose a group of three, and then a group of two, and then another group of two. So in this case, you can imagine the seven objects are the seven positions where the letters can go. The group of three are the three positions where we'll place the A's. The first group of two will be where we place the two B's, and the last group of two will be where we place the two C's. One thing I especially like about multinomial coefficients is how the notation matches perfectly with the formula. If you take the notation and add a fraction bar and then add factorials to every number, then you'll have the formula for the multinomial coefficient. And it turns out that this multinomial coefficient actually includes as special cases the factorial, the permutation, and the combination meaning we don't need all of these different tools to count. Actually, the multinomial coefficients can do all of those. So let's take a look at how that would work. So for this first one, this factorial problem, we had the letters from A through E, and we answered this with five factorial, but we can also answer it using a multinomial coefficient. So we have five objects. We're gonna choose one of the positions to be where the A goes, we'll choose one position to be where the B goes, one for the C, one for the D, and one for the E. So we get this sort of funny looking multinomial coefficient. We have five objects and we're gonna choose for each one to be in its own group. And if we looked at the formula, this is five factorial divided by, and then a bunch of one factorials, which of course are all one. And so we just get five factorial. So the factorial is a special case of the multinomial coefficient. Next, let's look at the permutation. So for this one, we again have the letters A through E, but we only wanted to order three of them. How can we phrase this as a multinomial coefficient? We can think of it like this. We have five letters. We'll choose one of them to be in the first position. We'll choose one to be in the second position. And we'll choose one to be in the third position. And then the other two, we'll choose those two to be left out. So we get this multinomial coefficient, five choose one, 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 two. And if we write the formula for this, five factorial over, there's a bunch of one factorials, and then there's a two factorial. And if we simplify this, we'll get five times four times three, which is exactly the permutation that we had before. So permutations are a special case of the multinomial coefficient. And our third example was the combination problem. We have the letters A through E, and we want to select three of them, but this time the order does not matter. So how can we do that? Well, as a multinomial coefficient, we again have five letters. We'll choose three of them to be in the group of letters that we selected, and then we'll choose the other two to be omitted. So we get this multinomial coefficient, five choose three, two. 
And this, it turns out, if you look at the formula, is the same as 5 choose 3. And it's also the same as 5 choose 2. So here's another added benefit of using the multinomial coefficient, is we can immediately see why 5 choose 3 and 5 choose 2 are the same thing, because they're both equivalent to the multinomial coefficient 5 choose a group of 2 and a group of 3. So the multinomial coefficient is a powerful counting tool that includes the special cases, the factorial, the permutation, the combination, and also allows us to solve even more types of problems that if we tried to only use those other three tools would require some modification. And a huge plus is the notation and the formula just line up so perfectly. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.